I ran a quick experiment. I trained three models on the same data set. All three models use the same architecture, optimize their learning rate, pretty much everything. But I did use a different batch size. These here are the plots showing the losses of two of those models. Look at how different they are. What is going on here? Let's find out. We are going to do this by training the same model with three different batch sizes. First, using a single sample from our training data set. Then we're gonna try the entire training set, all the data at once. And finally, we're gonna use a few samples, more than one, but fewer than the entire training set. Here is the code and you can find a link to this notebook in the description below. Here I'm using a combination of scikit-learn and Keras to create a fake data set, train it, and and evaluate the three models. The first thing I have to do here is create that fake data set. And I'm using the make blobs function from scikit-learn. You're gonna see that I'm using a thousand samples from which 80% are gonna go to the training set and the remaining 20% is gonna go to the test set. After creating that data set, I'm defining here a couple of functions that I'm gonna use on all three experiments. The first function, fit model, receives the batch size that I'm gonna be experimenting with, it creates a very simple neural network with a couple of layers, one hidden layers with 32 neurons and the output layer. Then I'm compiling the model with gradient descent and finally I'm fitting that model. Very simple fitting on the training set. Then I'm gonna be validating this model on the test set and notice that for the batch size, I'm using the argument that I'm passing to the function. Evaluate is very, very simple. First, I'm evaluating the model Model on both the training and the testing set so we can print the accuracy of the model. And finally, I'm plotting the losses from the training and testing processes. With all of this in place, we can start looking at the first experiment. This experiment uses a single sample. And whenever we use a single sample from the training data set, we call it stochastic gradient descent. In case you don't know what this line does, it allows me to compute how long this cell takes to run. Here here I want you to focus on a few things. First, notice this 800 here. That's the number of times the algorithm computes the loss and updates the model's weights during backpropagation. 800 times. And it's 800 because we have 800 training samples and we're using one sample per batch. And this of course means that this experiment takes a long time to complete. 3 minutes and 22 seconds. Having to compute the weights of the model so many times is very, very computational intensive. Now I want you to look at the chart. It's crazy. You definitely don't want that much noise in your losses. The reason this is happening is because we're updating the loss for every single training sample. Finally, the accuracy of this model is in the high 80s. It's not great to be honest, but there is something even more interesting. If I run this experiment again, the result could look very, very different. Much better accuracy or worse, I just don't know. And this happens because all of that noise. You see, the loss keeps jumping and it's very hard for the algorithm to settle on a good solution. Even if it reaches the global minimum, it might just jump right out of it. It's just too noisy. Let's look at the second experiment and this time I'm gonna use the entire training set as the batch size. Using all of the data at once is called batch gradient descent. Notice that here it says one instead of 800. We are now updating the model's weights once during every epoch. So we went from 800 updates down to a single update. So of course this model is gonna run really, really fast. 4.58 seconds, compare that with the three minutes and 22 seconds from before. And look at the noise on this chart. It's none, it's zero noise. The accuracy, 93, 94%, that's pretty good compared to the high 80s that we had before. So obviously this looks better, but there is a big problem that doesn't show here. Actually, two problems. First, this is a toy data set, so we can easily fit the entire data set in memory so we can compute the loss during every iteration. But in most real applications,
applications, forget about it. You won't be able to do that. And second, that lack of noise can get us stuck in local minima. Just like too much noise will get the model jumping around, no noise will get you stuck. We need something better. So let's look at the third experiment. Here I'm using 32 samples. 32 samples for my bat size. Using a few samples, more than one, but fewer than the entire training set, is called mini batch gradient descent. Now this 25 here tells us that we are updating the model's weights 25 times during every epoch. Now this of course runs pretty fast as well, 10.9 seconds. And the plot here is beautiful. You see some noise, but it's very smooth overall. Training and testing accuracy is the best. They are excellent. So we can conclude this model is right on point. So let me summarize what we learned here. First, stochastic gradient descent, which is when we use a single sample as our batch size. Really slow, a ton of noise, and it might not settle in a good solution. Not recommended. Second, batch gradient descent, which is when we use the entire training set as our batch size. Very fast, zero noise, but it requires a ton of memory and it might get us stuck in local minima. Not recommended. Third, mini batch gradient descent, which is when we use a few samples in every batch. Biggest problem by far, we need to worry about another hyperparameter, the batch size. Now we need to tune it. We need to experiment with it, but that gives us the best shot at finding a good solution without too much memory or too much training time. This method is what everyone uses. Four, plenty of people have run plenty of experiments and have concluded that a smaller batches are better. For example, 32 is a great default value. And finally, these are learning curves. They give us a ton of information about our models. And that's why you want to watch this video here, where I show you how to use learning curves to identify two of the most common problems in machine learning. And write some code, go nuts, build something cool, and I'll see you in the next one.